Hello, welcome to St. James on this Pentecost Sunday, the day we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove on the disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day did teach the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them in the form of the dove the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, and the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Well, happy Pentecost Sunday. I'm here with our John Swanson painting of Pentecost next to me. Uh, back when I was a chaplain leading an ecumenical campus ministry for a small liberal arts college in Arkansas, the students and I took some time at the beginning of the year to contemplate what we wanted our theme to be for that year. The students described having faced factions between the religious groups on campus, so we decided that our theme would be unity in diversity, just to remind us that we were one in God as people of faith, despite the fact that we came from so many different places in the country and different theological and denominational backgrounds. Then, when we worshipped and served together on building projects, we built a house for Habitat for Humanity that year, we noticed 
that it didn't matter what our background was. In fact, we actually forgot. It mattered instead that we were all seeking God's will for our lives together. And it was a wonderful, beautiful year for all of us, and a real deep sense of community developed. And memories of that experience um, still inspire me today. A similar thing happened when I was serving as a missionary in Chiang Mai, Thailand as a young adult. At the time, there was just this one really big church for really all the Americans to go and worship, if you wanted to worship in English. And so we'd all come from around from all over Chiang Mai. We would, we would come from our very diverse backgrounds. I mean, and they were about as diverse as you could imagine. Yet you'd never know it as we stood there side by side, singing hymns, reading scripture, taking communion. I was one of the teachers at the Sunday school class and the children from everyone's family came together and we read the same lessons from the Bible. We sang the same songs each and every week. We were aware, of course, that back in the States, all of us, all of these families would be attending very different kinds of churches. But in Chiang Mai, we were one body, one body in Christ, from the Baptists to the Presbyterians to the Pentecostals to the Lutherans. These experiences formed me. They gave me a sense of hope, a vision, a belief that what separates us is far less important or even interesting than what unites us. But I have to tell you that that particular hope, that vision for me has been severely tested over the past few years. And I have to wonder, you know, has the politicized religion we see throughout our nation now so infiltrated our society that that all those Americans who were once worshiping and serving together no longer do so in Chiang Mai? Has that college campus ministry now broken off into isolated factions once again, no longer able to serve side by side? I know it's certainly possible, maybe quite likely. And I want better for my children. I want better for all of our graduates. We are acknowledging graduates today. I want better for them too. Perhaps they will be able to move us into a unified a different, more unified path. But it's difficult because, as you know, we are surrounded by news of hatred and violence on all sides with mass shootings uh, just having been occurring recently at almost a daily rate. Like most of us, I'm still just reeling from the tragedy of the shooting in Uvalde and The images of those fourth graders and those children keep flashing through my mind. This week, a group of children were lined up, elementary school children, just walking, you know, past me on the streets here in La Jolla. And my first thought wasn't what it normally is, like, oh, look at those cute children. My first thought was, oh, no, they're really vulnerable. They're out here in the open. When I dropped off my children at, the, at their elementary school this week, I found myself looking around the campus wondering if all the doors were locked and wondering what the school office staff would do if someone charged inside that very much open, unlocked door carrying an assault rifle. I think of Buffalo and Tulsa, that Presbyterian church just up in Orange County all places where shootings have happened recently. And then the images from Ukraine are haunting me, and I can't get the photo of that pregnant woman being carried out in labor on a stretcher, who we know later died after the maternity ward was bombed. And I, I could go on, you know, but I won't, because we all know, and we all have images that stick with us And while I may be shocked by it, I know I shouldn't really be surprised. History reminds us that tragedy and terrible violence is part of our human story. Scripture tells us similar stories, reminds us repeatedly that we are dealing with very real and devastating evil. Indeed, this is the whole reason we needed the cross 
and the resurrection and why this is so central and powerful because evil did not and will never triumph over the power of God at work in Christ. This week, our daily office lectionary readings are taking us through Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and I, I'm just sitting with chapter 6, which says, Put on the armor of God, for we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That verse is actually our theme for Vacation Bible School this year. Put on the armor of God. And then we come to today, this special day, the feast day in the church calendar, the day of Pentecost. We read in Acts chapter 2 that on this day, people were gathering into Jerusalem from all corners of the Roman Empire. They represented competing economic interests, diverse cultures, a myriad of languages, many different religious traditions. And nevertheless, God's grace was given freely to all of them, all who heard and believed the gospel message preached that day. The gifts of tongues that was bestowed upon Jesus' followers in the upper room, the power of the Holy Spirit didn't stay in that little room. We know what happened. It went out and spread to everybody and all who could hear it in such a way that everyone who heard could understand the message being preached in their own language, many of them hearing it for the very first time. This event is the opposite of what occurred in the Tower of Babel. That story, the Tower of Babel, no one could understand anything anybody was saying because they were all speaking different and unknown languages. That resulted, of course, in chaos and disunity. But on the day of Pentecost, everyone could understand clearly what was, what was being said, resulting in unity and an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. On this day, the church proclaims this message of unity in diversity, a love that triumphs over hatred and all our divisions. Like the prophet of Joel predicted and prophesied, God really has poured out God's Holy Spirit upon all people, no matter who we are. Class doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. Status doesn't matter. And none of it matters. We are all able to receive God's Holy Spirit as one people. Imagine now, all of those immigrants and foreigners who had converged on Jerusalem that day, returning back to their homes, spreading the gospel message of love, unity. The church was born in this incredible diversity, yet it was carried out throughout the world. Since its inception, the church has been an intensely diverse group of people, hailing from a variety of cultures and languages. But God chose that in the midst of all that diversity, God's spirit would be poured out and changed, and changed the history of the world changed it forever, bringing strangers into the fellowship and love of God. And that message hasn't changed. But those who claim to be Jesus' followers have often failed to live up to this incredible truth and message that we learn on Pentecost. Perhaps one of the greatest temptations facing Christians today is just losing sight of this lesson of Pentecost recognizing that there is no Jew nor Greek, neither male nor female, nor slave nor free, as Paul says. We are all one in Christ. Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit and all the fruits of that Spirit that were poured out that day. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Just as that Holy Spirit was poured out on peoples of every language and tongue and background at Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit today continues to be poured out in order to draw people from every culture and language and tribe and race and nation and socioeconomic status and political persuasion and gender and age and class and ethnicity all into the family of God. It is possible. It is possible through the power of the Holy Spirit, to live and proclaim our unity 
in Christ in the diversity of this world. And that has the power to overcome evil and violence and hatred and division among us. And we do it with God's help, by the power of the Spirit. That is the good news of Pentecost. Thanks be to God. On this feast of Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of God's Holy Spirit to comfort and dwell with his people, let us pray for all those who feel lonely and abandoned. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those caught up in war. We pray for the refugee and those without a home. And in a moment's silence, we pray for those who we find lying on our own hearts. We say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So may the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost Bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God the Father Almighty, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Great to have you with us. Please do join us again next Sunday. And uh, if you're new, do please make yourself on the, known on the online form. This is a big week in the life of St. James because our organ is arriving this week. So uh, after many years of preparation, it should start to be installed this week. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.